What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today I will show you exactly what I do for a typical leg workout to make these legs grow for the next contest. Obviously, nowadays in competitive bodybuilding, even in classic physique as I noticed, you need the legs to be bigger. Even though, and this is a question in nowadays bodybuilding, when are your legs actually in proportion to the upper body? That is something to be questioned, as in the 70s they were in proportion in my opinion, and nowadays they are a lot bigger. But let's see this first. <laughs> All right, I just had to show that one. When you catch something on camera like that, it is priceless. But anyway, what I was saying is that in the 70s, basically when true classic bodybuilding was still present, the legs were smaller in comparison to today's bodybuilding with the same upper bodies. For example, Arnold had a huge upper body, but mediocre legs, if you compare them to nowadays bodybuilding, that's what I was going for, but that obviously is not what they're exactly looking for in the Classic Physique Olympia. So, I will make these legs grow, but in a golden era style, so I don't want these tree trunk legs. I want to increase the quality of my legs, first of all getting them a lot more conditioned for the show, but also working on the quad sweep, and that is what I'm doing right here. My feet are very close together on the platform, and that means that I'm working the quad sweep. Remember, the closer your legs are together, the more of the outside of the quad you work, and the more uh, outwards your feet are on the platform, the more inside of the quads you will work, and also the inner thighs. But right now, I'm working on the quad sweep. And you might be wondering, what on earth are you doing on that leg press with those bands? Well, let me explain this to you. It might not look logical if you just look at it like that, but think about this. You want constant tension on the legs. That is what bodybuilding is about. Tension, time under tension. So the maximum tension is at the bottom because that's where the weight is the heaviest, we all know that. And right at the top, it actually is a lot lighter to, you know, it feels a lot lighter to press. When you do squats or bench press, when you're almost at the top, it's a much lighter weight because basically your legs almost fully stretched. So to prevent this, I actually attach bands to the machine that I'm doing. You can do it in a Smith machine with squats, but also on a leg press that I'm doing right now. And this actually enhances and increases the tension as you're pressing the weight, because the more distance you create um, that is made with the bands, the more resistance they will actually apply. So you press your legs outwards and the bands will tighten up more, making it more difficult to press the weight the higher you go. This is a dynamic weight. So I'm actually adding a lot of plates to this leg press, but it feels a lot different than if I would not add any bands at all. So trust me, try this out, especially when you're pretty strong in the legs. Try this technique out and it will transform the feeling of your legs. Normally, uh, a leg press just tires me out entirely in my entire body, but now I can actually feel the quads you know, tensing up. I can feel the lactic acid building up, which is what bodybuilding is all about. It's about the muscle, not about working on your stamina during a workout, but working on the muscle, making the muscle give up before the body does. So, what you want to do in a leg press and any leg exercise that is a compound exercise, you want to go at least 90 degrees. And if you go a lot deeper than 90 degrees, you might actually, you know, uh, impair your lower back as well, because the lower you go, the more your butt is lifted off of this uh, bench, and the more lower back will be actually curved. And you don't want that. You want to go as deep as you possibly can without lifting your butt off the bench. You can feel your hamstrings, you can feel your glutes working, and especially you can feel the quads working as well, which makes this an amazing exercise compared to a regular leg press without the bands. So trust me, try this out. 
Uh, it might seem weird, but if you don't try something like this, I, I never tried this uh, for a long time. I never even considered it until I saw John Meadows and Antoine Vallard try this out in their older videos. And John Meadows still does this and look at his legs. They look pretty amazing. So this enhances time and the tension. And if you have knee problems, knee pains, the tension here that is created will actually prevent you from feeling any knee pain. So if you can't do the leg press or a squat, for example, because of your knees, try working with bands and you will feel a difference. So after having done a leg press that is very heavy and after doing the heaviest set, I still did a burning set to really uh, burn out the muscles, get a nice pump in the legs, because right now we're going to do some squats and you can't see it right here, but I want to go deeper than 90 degrees. So what I did is put a plate of 15 kilograms beneath, you know, on the floor so I can stand on it with my heels, allowing me to go deeper. The only thing preventing me to go deeper than 90 degrees is basically my ankle flexibility. I'm working on it a lot, but right now I still need to add a plate under my heels to be able to go deeper than 90 degrees. The benefit of going deeper is you enhance, you know, the uh, stimulation of the glutes and the hamstrings, which is what I need to work on. And think about this, the stretch of the quads will be improved a lot as well, which is what you want, the maximum possible stretch in the quads. And honestly, I did notice that during the workout, I only noticed it when I watched the video back, so that is pretty funny. But anyway, you can see me going down lower than 90 degrees. I'm wearing the Vintage Genetics workout shoes, the high top shoes, kind of comparable to rider wear. They feel exactly the same, very flat soles, very loose soles, you know, they're not very... Uh, um, you know, you can bend them, that's what I'm trying to say, and that allows you to do a lot of movements with ease, especially working the calves. But it also works very well uh, using a plate like this, it's very comfortable going down lower than 90 degrees, touching the hamstrings to the calves, which then you know you go deep enough. So it stretches out the full quads, it enhances the stimulation of the hamstrings and the glutes, which is what you want, because I, especially me, because the hamstrings is my biggest weak point. But doing an exercise like this, especially for tall guys, you have to do a full range of motion. And of course, when increasing the range of motion, you increase the time under tension, and then you decrease the amount of weight that you can do. So if you're used to doing, for example, 120 kilograms, try going down to 100 kilograms to ensure you you're able to do this exercise properly. And when you go down, you want to do it nice and controlled, nice and slow. You don't want to lose your balance because standing on a plate like this, it does, you know, uh, diminish the balance just a little bit. So you want to look out for that. And of course, I'm wearing the Vintage Genetics workout belt pretty tight around my core to make sure I stay straight because that is also a problem with tall people like me. When you go down deep enough, you your back might actually, you know, lower back might do more work to keep your to keep you straight. And we don't want to impair the lower back too much. So wearing a belt does help protect it. So that is why I like to wear it during squats. So all in all, we did quite a lot of sets of the leg press, quite a lot of sets of the squats, and sometimes that's all you need to do. And this is the last exercise that is a Tom Platz exercise. It's a sissy squat. We don't have a sissy squat equipment right now, but you can do it with just your body weight. And it feels pretty intense after having your quads pumped up like this, after doing leg presses and squats. So as I said, sometimes doing a lot of sets of one single but incredibly effective exercise is more than enough for a complete workout. I split up the hamstrings and the quads, so that is why I only focus on the quads right now and I will focus on the hamstrings in a different workout. And this is a very nice finisher to fully stretch the quads right after having them pumped up, which works the best. So always end with an exercise that stretches out the pumped up muscle. And then we're going to do some stretches and we're starting out with the hip flexors. So I'm going to show you the stretching routine that I like to do after legs. So if you sit down a lot, you want to stretch out your hip flexors because the more you sit, 
uh, the shorter the hip flexors will be and you will actually get an anterior pelvic tilt which is basically means a donald duck butt your butt sticking out and your abdominal sticking forward as well and that is now what you want you want a straight positioning of your pelvis so that's why you have to stretch out the muscles if you know that you're sitting down a lot and this is a stretch for the inner thighs uh, works very well what you want to do is sit like this and then put your hands around your feet and push them actually pull them towards uh, towards you so the more you pull the stronger the stretch will be and that stretch feels pretty amazing and this next stretch is for the hamstrings as you can see one leg at a time to enhance a full stretch um, if you're flexible enough you can do it with two arms like this but you can also do the standing version where you of course stand with two legs and then bend over and then try to touch your toes but i like this technique a lot more because it allows you to do one leg at a time because sometimes one leg isn't as flexible as the other and this is the only way to truly find out and the last stretch is for the glutes because you did work the glutes in this workout at least i did and you do want to stretch them out as well because they are filled up with blood and you want to remove the toxins from there so your post-workout meal will be more effective and directed to those muscle fibers so this is another stretch as i said for the glutes what you want to do is sit like this and what you want to make sure of is that the upper leg uh, you pull it as much towards your body as possible so you grab your ankle and push it towards your stomach basically and that motion actually stretches the glutes and then you want to lean over like this and you will feel an incredible stretch in the glutes for sure so i showed you what i like to do for quads and the stretches that i like to do right after this i have a post-workout meal consisting of 125 grams of basmati rice 250 grams of codfish 10 grams of coconut oil and of course the turmeric the salt the pepper and some vegetables of course like celery and some broccoli anyway guys i want to thank you for watching a lot more videos are coming and i'm very soon starting a dutch vintage genetics vlogging channel called vintage genetics nl which me and my girlfriend will be doing because on this channel i want to focus more on the knowledge part of bodybuilding classic bodybuilding the workouts the nutrition plans the supplements and such uh, but on the other channel, I want to do more of vlog style, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and what my girlfriend does as well. So if you're interested, head over to Vintage Genetics NL, already subscribe, and you will see a lot more videos on there as well. Thanks for watching, and do not forget to stay golden.